live in a few seconds now. So we are live now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. All of us have had a terrific year um, of learning and unlearning and a year packed with an agenda. We had to get to um, from managing the home front, work front, as well as our children at home and their schooling. Of course, I loved having the kids home and all to myself. But of course, at the end of the day, I also thought this was a temporary arrangement and it was joyful. But now the way things are moving forward, it doesn't seem like 2021 promises, um, you know, a different scenario and the situation has been extended. So I feel at a loss of uh, how do I manage everything? How do I manage my work, uh, schooling? Uh, parenting as well as the home front and uh, to help me with this and to help all of us parents uh, understand how we should move forward cope with the current situation and help our children excel in this situation I have with me our esteemed guest for today uh, Mr. Ranjit Das principal of one of the esteemed schools in Aurangabad Nath Valley School before I begin his introduction I want to thank him and uh, all of you for joining us yesterday and uh, being so patient with um, the technology and the situation. At the same time, of course, every situation brings a lot of learnings and I'm thankful to Sir for having given us this time uh, to have this interaction. A little bit about Sir, uh, Ranjit Dasar received his bachelor's and master's degree from St. Stephen's College in Delhi University. He went on to do his MSc in Education Studies uh, from Oxford University and served at the Woodstock School from 80 to 92 as a teacher and then head of department and finally as high school coordinator from 90 to 92. He was the chairman of the Education Committee of Woodstock School and a member of the Board of Directors of Woodstock School from 2012 to 2018. He was also with the Aurangabad Police Public School. He has been the founder, principal of Nath Valley School and still holds that position. During his years, he has set up schools for Indian students in China and Italy. That's really interesting. Uh, he's also the recipient of the National Award for Teachers and he got this award at the hands of the Honorable President of India on September 5, 2014. I'm really thrilled to welcome that, sir, to this conversation. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for accepting this invitation today. My pleasure. Sir, um, the current situation uh, is obviously no news to you, is um, what is happening at home front as well as the school's front. Uh, of course, you are aware of everything. But as parents, we have really felt at the loss of this interaction with the school to understand what we should really be doing to help our children as well as help ourselves. Uh, I have to be selfish that it's not so easy to only think about the kids and just work uh, tirelessly for them. But uh, there is so much at our front also that we need to take care of. So um, we somehow felt that this interaction would have really helped us and will really help us to cope with what's coming ahead uh, because this situation doesn't seem temporary anymore. Um, hence, I'm speaking from uh, the whole parent fraternity's um, side and as well as a fellow educator. So I do understand a lot that is happening at school then. But while we were battling with what was happening at the home front, what was the school going through? What was the back end of the school? So um, we were also, and like everybody else, uh, hit by the uh, onslaught of the pandemic. 
there's not a soul in the world who didn't get affected in some way or the other. Some got very adversely affected, some less so, but everybody got affected right. psychologically, economically, physically, you know, emotionally. So everybody's got affected. And the schools also took a hit. And we suddenly had to step into these online classes when uh, the Maharashtra government uh, declared a lockdown of schools from the 15th of March. And then uh, the national lockdown came around 23rd of March. But we were able to quickly slip into these online classes because as early as April 2019, note the date, 2019, we had signed up with Microsoft Teams, trained all the teachers, and given every child an ID. Now, we didn't feel the need to use it for much, you know, for a year. But then suddenly, when this happened, by the first week of April, within a week or 10 days of this happening, we were on and classes were happening in stages, first class 12 and so on. But I must say we had teething problems. It wasn't easy to suddenly slip into this. But fortunately with training and retraining and uh, constant uh, encouragement of the teachers, they were able to deliver a, a good module. And then came the vacations. And further training happened. So I believe that when schools started in June, we were able to be pretty efficient at the online class delivery. And we have continued to improve. Just uh, last week, we had uh, three days of workshops. And now the workshops are continuing every afternoon, two hours of workshop to improve delivery, uh, improve presentation skills, and so on and so forth. So, we were hit, but we slipped into this mode. And now I think one of the greatest learnings that I have had or teachers have had is that we've become tech savvy. Yes. <laughs> True. I think that's for all of us. Even as the parent fraternity, I think we would say we've all become tech savvy along with our children. <laughs> So I saw so that's a great realization. Actually, I never thought that at the back end, the school had to also do so much. Uh, we obviously came with a lot of criticism why school is not doing this, why school is not doing that. But to uh, actually right now, when you said we had to generate IDs for each student, figure out the app, train the teachers. So there was a lot of stuff happening at the back end. What about the curriculum? Did it have to change? Did the teachers have to change their teaching style? or we were able to just cope with what we were doing earlier? So the government uh, made a policy in the early years that uh, suddenly the screen time shouldn't be increased so much. And so only two classes for you know the junior primary, maybe three classes for the primary and then uh, up to the eighth and maybe four classes for nine, 10, 11, 12. So obviously the curric curriculum couldn't be completed uh, if it was the full curriculum. But yes. CBS reduced the curriculum from 1 to 12 by 30%. Okay. And so we were able to cover most of what had to be taught and more. Now, the interesting thing is I've done a survey. I've talked to many children, you know, when school started in between. At one point, I had 500 kids attending the school from January till early March. So some said they did better and learned better online. Oh, wow. Others, others said, no, the learning process was much better when they were physically in school. So, right. you know, but there were some children whose marks went up dramatically, whose performance and other skills they went up dramatically because online. So they were the shy ones who prefer to be, you know, behind the scenes and so on. And, you know, they're not in the forefront in the class. So, you know, in any situation, you know, some like it better, some of don't course. like it for everything. It's the same. Right. Of course, uh, I think for me as a parent, I, I really loved having both the kids at home and learning in front of me as well. I think the kids were also very comfortable, but they surely miss being at school because the parents are also helicopter monitoring every moment of their life. So they felt stifled. I know Ariveer for sure wanted to run back to school at any opportunity he would have got. So that leads me to our second question that now since this COVID-19 uh, situation has been extended and we don't see this getting uplifted anytime soon, 
how do you suggest we as parents should cope with uh, this how do we um synchronize with the school and create synergies where we are actually benefiting the children as well as well as uh, each individual like the school itself the institution of the school as well as the parents are able to um work together for their own well being as well as the children so that's a very important thing you know we have to have um, a collaboration between parents and teachers and uh, the medium at the moment is online classes the first thing is teachers parents students have to realize that online classes have to be taken seriously yeah there are lots of jokes floating around you know kids eating burgers while the class is going on you know switching off the cameras and so on and um, a lot of times uh, you know children are not appearing properly dressed a lot of times uh, you know you can see that they've just stumbled out of bed so mm -hmm. it was okay that was a different year but now schools will open soon so we have to take it seriously and bring in discipline we have to bring in discipline even to the online classes even if it's at home right um including you know things like if possible they should wear the uniform yes that's them a sense of uh, you know importance of the occasion true you no know, so uh, you know if it's possible i don't expect parents to go running around getting uniforms now and so on and so forth but you know i had this um, orientation for class 1 and 2 kids many kids came in their uniforms and they were so happy that they had a uniform yes so you have to have discipline you have to have a schedule you have to uh, dress properly you have to sleep properly you have to groom yourself properly it's not like you know ghar pe hain to kuch bhi chalta hai so we have to that's the role of the parent then make sure that um, uh, we have the uh, wifi connectivity which is good we saw what technology did to us yesterday <laughs> <laughs> yes and it happens to me all the time here i'm in the middle of a very important program electricity goes and my uh, computer goes off and then takes 2 minutes and then signing on again and so on and so forth so yes. at least what is in our control like a good strong wifi should be provided so that the kids are able to see properly communicate properly and so on and one last thing is you know parents must be involved must do all these things but they should not interfere in the learning process during class you know we want parents to be there to care for the children to you know uh, help them afterwards with their assignments all those things are fine but one of the problems our teachers did have that parents used to be around behind the child and saying ask this question ask that question <laughs> and sometimes asking the teacher their own doubts <laughs> so you know it'll be great if it's a one to one but when there are 30 kids then it becomes a little bit but you know what was the every coin has the good side the good side was to see the joy and the involvement of the parents and the excitement of the parents and you know so that must continue but the learning process the child should handle on his own or her own that's very important true and i totally agree with the uh, point on the uniform sir because i am a firm believer of it that unless the child is in the uniform they just feel like it's just another thing they're doing uh wearing the uniform brings that seriousness that uh, sort of a connect that i'm in school and i'm doing this for uh, a more serious purpose than just another fun class um so there was also a challenge with the online learning that the children had accessibility because of the internet and because the teachers unable to sort of monitor 30 children at the same time that they had these side chats going and they would put up like a separate screen where a youtube video was going on or you know so many things i heard from friends and what their children have come up with their genius is of course uh, to have figured on this out because for me to handle one screen feels like such a challenge uh but so did the actual learning really happen according to you did children really get what they were supposed to get from the online learning experience i think so and the evidence is in the uh, assessments that were done afterwards 
right till class 12 assessments were done. And exams were there in the secondary school and so on. And, and many of these tests and assessments were done offline in, in that uh, period of 200, uh, you know, yeah. two months. They really did learn. So academically, these online classes were successful. Yeah, there were the naughty ones who tried to, you know, throw people off the uh, class and all that. Then we developed skills to, you know, uh, not give them that power to delete the teacher, you know, that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> but learning was amazing. The learning was amazing and they really did well. I also used to teach, by I teach class 12. And uh, I, I gave them quizzes and so on. And uh, amazing learning. And, you know, somehow the kids are basically digital natives. Yes. We are digital immigrants. <laughs> totally. <laughs> they loved this, you know, uh, digital stuff and all that. Yeah, initially they were fooling around. And they realized the seriousness because tests were coming and they did well. But I'll tell you what did suffer. The intangibles of education. Totally. The emotional, the physical, the social, the cultural. You know, just lean, learning how to deal with people and, and problems and all that because you were on your own, you were isolated. True. So, and that I believe is as important as academic. So that is what suffered and that's why I'm a huge proponent of open the schools immediately. <laughs> I back you on that claim for sure, sir. Of course, the children completely suffered on the emotional front. Um, I actually saw my children craving to meet their friends and Every time you would ask them about the best memory of school, it was not the classroom. It was all the other facets like the lunchtime is a lot of fun and the break time, I just gobble up my food and run to my friends in the other class. And they remember that one particular tree where they hide. So my older one was introducing school to the younger one because he just started this year. And he didn't talk about your class will be on the second floor and things like that. It was more about... Oh, if you go on the right, here's where you can hide and eat your tiffin if you don't want to share. And if here's where you go meet your friends, this is the slide where you can run around. Don't go to this place, you will get a scolding. <laughs> so, you know, there was a lot of joy and a lot of memories that he was sharing. And uh, it was definitely all those feelers were missing from the current year that went by. So, but then there was a lot of debate from the parent front uh, regarding the fees. And they said the school is not justified in taking the uh, complete fee, the tuition fee uh, that was being collected. And uh, I know the Supreme Court actually also passed, um, the division of the Supreme Court also passed a judgment saying this is not our prerogative to step into and the school is uh, an independent authority on this. Uh, what is your viewpoint? What should the parents have felt? And was this feeling justified? So, we all understood, the schools understood principles. I'm in about four principles groups um, online in WhatsApp groups. And I have a group of 30 principles. We meet physically here. We just had a meeting 10 days ago. Everybody empathized with the parents. They realized that everybody was going through, as I said, psychological, economical, you know, all sorts of problems. We empathized. But yet we had to make the school running. We had okay. to keep the school running. Now, people said that, okay, lesser hours, so, uh, you know, less fees. As you realize, because of the back end that uh, we had to take care of, the skills needed to deliver an online class, if you're doing it live, those schools who were doing it live, was such that it was not like a normal skill. So, you know, um, of just going to a classroom and, and teaching. So even if the teachers were here for less time, the value of their services, the value of the delivery was much more than a normal class. So if you want to translate that value into fees, but let's not get into that. Sure, yeah. All schools I know gave a 15 to 30% discount. True. Nath Valley gave a 30% discount on what our fee was supposed to be and what class one parents had already paid at the time of admission in February. Right. That, that was the fee. Gave a 30% discount. Right. Because we realized, and parents realized, we saved some amount on electricity, water we don't save because we pay, pay a fixed amount, whether we use it or not, there's a water tax. Right. But so we have so many uh, 
expenses, the fixed expenses, which account for at least 80 percent, are salaries, maintenance, electricity, water, and taxes. And there are so many <clears throat> other, uh, you know, intangibles one doesn't realize. So we were probably saving about uh, 20 percent, but we gave a discount of 30 percent. And the Supreme Court actually didn't say we don't want to interfere. They said all schools should give 15% discount for these things that they have saved. Okay. But many schools give 20 and 30% discount. But we have to run. Many schools like ours don't make a profit. There's nobody who, it's not a business. It's not commercial. No, pay, no trustee or no owner you know, takes a profit. Mm -hmm. Suppose there's a surplus. It is then plowed back for the children. The surplus is not made by any individual. It's made by the students of the school. Right. They get it back by a better building, a better football ground, a tennis court or something else. And therefore, uh, I had told parents, you know, it's your money. It's going to you. It's not going anywhere else. We're giving 30% discount and, and that's the best we can do. We have to you know, there are 100 schools closing down in Maharashtra because fees have not come in. There are at least 10 or 15 schools for sale. They're saying, please buy it, we can't run the school. So, so a person with bigger pockets may come in and buy. So, you know, we empathize. We knew parents were suffering. But to give a blanket, your parents used to say 50% discount, blanket discount. Why should the discount be given to somebody who's getting a full salary, whose business has not been closed, his, um, you know, uh, Kirana shop or the chemist shop is still generating more profits. So anybody who is really suffering, we ask them to come and meet us and we would give them uh, installment payments or a discount. I, some people had serious health issues. I've given them, I, I have to check documents to see it's true. Give them, so we were very sympathetic, empathetic, but yet the school has to run, has to maintain, otherwise it will just crumble and uh, you know, so sure. that's why. Yes. No, I totally understand. I had this conversation with another uh, school owner last night and he also expressed that there was so much fixed cost that it was very tough to reduce uh, the fees. And also his perspective was that uh, the fixed cost actually ate up everything that we were getting from the parents there was not like a profit that was being generated in fact we are in loss and you know they actually they own multiple schools around the country as they said there might be a situation where they won't be able to cope for some of the schools because they won't be able to feed and fend for themselves so uh, it was a very interesting perspective actually we usually miss the other person's perspective we never see uh, the school as actually an entity that needs to survive for the well-being of so many more children than just ours. Uh, I must tell you a very nice story. You know, some parents really understood. Uh, right in the beginning, I got a letter from a parent in email. Uh, mm. You know, that said, you know, High Court of Aurangabad, this, that. And I said, oh my God, is it a legal notice? He was an advocate there. He said, sir, we are so delighted with the way you are doing these online classes. My son is loving it. I've heard that there's a problem with fees. I want to pay the full year's fees. Can you tell me what it is? Wow. And, and there was another parent uh, who said that, um, you know, um, I have heard that some schools are closing. I hope Nath Valley doesn't close. I was, I'm sending 25,000 rupees extra in fees, you know, so that you can. Close. So these are just really wonderful stories of people who understood, you know, and, and tried their best to support the school. And likewise, we tried to support those parents who were suffering. Right. Especially if they, and we kept inviting them, please come, we want to help you, you know? So many came and we did whatever we could. Right. Surely, thank you for sharing this with us. So uh, I'm sure this will clear doubts for a lot of parents uh, and a lot of people out there that why this current situation demanded a certain thing. Um, so then there was an at additional attachment to this experience that was the mental well-being of the children. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of parents approach me that uh, somebody's child didn't leave the room for two or three days. People had stopped eating. Children were more um, anxious, fearful. Uh, they were irritable. They were actually reacting on their parents. 
this situation didn't really sort of support their mental well-being and their emotional well-being alongside the fact that the parents were also facing similar situations um i know that recently you had an interaction where y'all did the study on culpability for children and everybody else would you like share some light on how parents can cope with the situation so you know as i said in the beginning we all took a hit yes but we are mature and mm-hmm. we we know how to handle those hits some more than others children are still struggling with so many other issues you know they're struggling with uh, their growth physical and emotional growth they're struggling with new uh, learnings you know new concepts in maths and so on and so forth they are fearing a test and a assessment they have issues of morality what's right what's wrong what parents want them to do what they uh, have been exposed to um there were huge stresses and tensions about the future what is the future hold for me um, you know will i be able to succeed in this very uh, confused and uh, chaotic world um then uh, teenagers have the identity crisis then they heard of people they knew and loved who died and they saw images on tv so many things they had to cope with right and they had to cope with with their little minds you know uh, not experienced um, you know personalities and, and experienced uh, human beings that we are so therefore parents had to and have to in future also this is not uh, this this stress that pre- was created last year is not going to go away from uh, their emotions and their minds so uh, parents need to be much much more understanding you know first acknowledge that they're going through this true very true sir um so you've gone on okay. Yeah. Achieved rather than judgmental, you could have done better. Appreciate the efforts they've put in. Appreciate anything that they've done. One very very important thing is show them trust. Yeah. Children yeah. crave trust of parents and teachers. I, you know, and this year more, you know, when they are troubled, when they feel that somebody believes in them, trusts them, you know, that's a huge boost uh, to their well-being. also be parents be very very aware of any signs of disturbance you just mentioned somebody who uh, yeah. fits into that category what is causing that disturbance you also mentioned maybe they have access to the internet and devices and maybe so what if you see some disturbance try and figure out what's happening so once you build that trust with the child as i said earlier encouragement trust understanding then they may open up to you and if not uh, to an uncle or an aunt that they trust they must uh, see what's disturbing them is it somebody bullying them online is it some neighbor who is uh, uh, fighting with them or is it some friend of theirs in the society who doesn't let him play soccer whatever you know you have to understand and find out what's disturbing them and once this is done the child will derive strength that i am loved i am understood i am trusted i can open up yeah and then i can go you know so and you know, these things are for normal times also but in these times they have acquired much greater importance True. so rather than you know always strictness and so on and so forth and you know maybe i've just said on one hand that online classes should be uh, disciplined but maybe in other areas we can relax a little bit on the discipline and so on just to make the child feel comfortable and at home because the child is going through a lot and the child i mean from age 6 to 12 13 14 18 also you know senior students of class 12 are going through this right so uh definitely so i think i would have to share i would to uh, share that 
Is my sound kind of it's it's breaking up. It's getting muffled. Uh, let's see. I I want to so um, I had a similar experience with my young son, where for few days he was uh, completely disturbed, and uh, I was a class teacher. So uh, she actually noticed that there was a behavioral change in him. And um, he took the onus of actually chatting with him and discussing over the phone. And that one phone call with the class teacher totally reversed the issue. So um, I actually even don't know what was disturbing him till now. But there was a disturbance. It was about 10 to 14 years, but the teacher caught on to it. And uh, I have to be thankful and have a teacher for actually pointing it out and addressing it at her end as well. Um, it worked wonders for him because he had stopped teaching. Uh, he was uh, always said, let her become very sensitive prior to And of course, the children had to be locked, locked up in the house, being uh, not unable to leave and listening to so much of the negative news, it did have a you know, negative impact on them. So definitely, I totally agree. So create that support system for them. Be less judgmental. Parents should be like children are Alexa. They should do everything perfectly at all times, and they should do as they're told at all times. Uh, for the parents to realize and, that children. And, children, and, children. And, and divert their attention by pandering to their interests and encouraging it, whether it's painting or cooking, yeah. you know, cycling or whatever it is, or whether it is, uh, you know, uh, writing, reading, you know, that diverts their attention from this uh, terrible thing that's going around. Definitely. I completely agree. So also on the front of acknowledging the feeling that it has so much power because somehow in India we are very used to telling our children don't feel the negative emotions. And then the children feel like doing something wrong by feeling sad or being angry or being upset. If you can acknowledge that emotion and just accept it, that yes, even the child can be annoyed and be upset about the current situation. You can take a step in building that bond, surely. So there's another concern that is very rampant is the eyesight. Because now schools have increased the duration as well. Two to six hours, depending on which city it is in. Um, parents, of course, everybody in Sudan, you know, are concerned about the children's well-being and something to do the eyesight. But the school is not the only uh, place where they're focusing on the screen. They do them do some classes online. Then they have the education time. Which is now almost like a uh, no option situation because there's a limitation to what the children can do with their time as well. So it somehow becomes like an easy escape to become that little entertainment uh, in the day. Uh, has there been any discipline or mandate for students to do to protect their eyesight? For yes, there are eye exercises, and one of the workshops that we attended last week. Uh, made it uh, uh, clear to us that every now and again, after every one or two classes, you know, there are these, uh, you know, eyeball exercises, look up, look down, look left, right, roll your eye, eye uh, balls. Uh, then one of our teachers suggested what she's been doing is that, you know, the screen is in front of you. So uh, just tell the children every now and again, just look away from the screen and look at something distant and focus at something distant and then come back. So eye exercises, if you do, it certainly takes care of your, your eyes, you know, and uh, I know sometimes when I have to teach uh, two classes in a row back to back, you know, I have to do that. And they're very simple, you know, it's uh, if you, uh, you know, do it five times, eyes to the right, eyes to the left, eyes on top, down, and uh, then rotate, the left, rotate, right, 
it gives you that uh, muscle development uh, and saves your eyes. And this was what was told to us by the educationists who are uh, doing the workshop. And I really liked this one um, that uh, the teacher gave. And so I very often then look out of my window for that distant view and then come back here. So that's also an exercise. So yeah, what I think is that uh, we have increased it because last year the syllabus was reduced by 30%. This year, it's not likely to be. Schools are going to start very soon. And uh, if we don't uh, run up to that starting of school when there will be six or seven classes a day now, then it'll be very difficult for kids to adjust. So you know, we have increased it to uh, four, five, and six, class nine, 10, 11, 12 have six classes. So the important thing is we give a five minute break between each, which we weren't doing last time. And between the fifth and sixth period, there's a lunch break for the senior uh, students. So screen time needs to be prioritized. As, as the principal, I say top priority must go to school. Kids have lost so much academic time and uh, academic uh, development that let's give that a priority right now. Because the other you know, games and classes went on online last time also with fewer academics. So let's have more academic, prioritize that. Yes, kids need entertainment and perhaps uh, interesting class or painting or dancing or something online. So, uh, but if these exercises are done and there are enough breaks, I don't think the eyes really uh, get uh, damaged to the extent that people sometimes suspect. Okay. That's wonderful to know. Um, my next question, so is that this also gave us the opportunity sitting in one city and exploring the world and getting the best resources for our children. <clears throat> so like I know my son was doing a speech and debate class with the head of Philips and it was wonderful to have that uh, kind of experience. In the tips. Uh, I see this as a solution for India. Moving forward, do you think India can actually use this online education and the way the week is being set up as uh, the answer to our problem to educate our country? Because the best research can be the most remote area of India without actually needing to and we just need a good connection. So, uh, in this last year, and I've been discussing this with uh, principals of CBSE schools and CBSE and we've done workshops on it. This was a mixed blessing. While, yeah, it could reach the villages, it didn't. You know, we have technical problems, you can imagine. What. So they call this the digital divide. The rich and poor, urban, rural. So rich and urban, they have the best access to online. Rural and poor, it is very, very erratic. There were many kids during online uh, schooling who never attended school for a single day. We had a child, this is a lovely story. We had a child we'd taken under the Right to Education Act uh, eight years ago, before we, uh, had, we didn't have to. And we were giving him free education. Now he's going to the ninth. So one of his classmates said, you know, this boy never attends the class. So we called the father, he lives close by because it has to be called the father. So what happened? He said, I have uh, only one phone and I have a business, I take it there. So I, I can't afford another phone. So this child who had identified this missing boy arranged for a, a, a pad, a device. I called this boy with his father to the school and gave him this device. So then he could attend. So if this was a problem here with an RTE kid, you can imagine what it's like in villages and tribal areas and so on. So the concept is very nice. You said absolutely the right thing. When teachers don't want to go there, maybe technology and Wi-Fi and, and a device or a smartphone or something will be there. But it's not happening and it, it won't happen for a while. The mm. other thing is, as I said in the beginning, academics were fine, but the soft skills, you need a teacher there, you need children there physically with each other playing to really give them the well-rounded education we all talk about. True. 
That's so true. So, are schools going to open? So, Telangana has announced their opening on the first of July, and uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, uh, one of the best-known doctors who's often on TV, has uh, recently written a report for the Karnataka government. He was made chairman of a task force to decide whether schools should open. And uh, I'll just quickly read to you what he said. Sure. Digital learning has achieved less than expected and has also created large gaps in learning and educational inequality. The report says, arguing for optimizing learning, physical health, mental health, and nutritional aspects of children, any further delay in school reopening may push children into child marriage, child trafficking, begging, worsening conditions and overall poor quality of education. So he says the loss of formal education has caused a lot of uh, damage psychologically, uh, emotionally, physically, and his thing is must open as soon as possible. Here's one of the best doctors and he said, yeah, COVID may come, third wave may come, children may get it, but there are enough cures for it. And uh, he even suggested the government should uh, ensure every child, especially the poor children. So in case there's hospitalization, parents don't have to get lost to it. But he really feels school should immediately and from class 1 to 12 right away, not you know that graded thing that we have done in the past. So Telangana has done it. Um, Karnatak has got this recommendation from this top doctor of India in the world, Dr. Devi Shetty. Maharashtra is watching. They have a task force. My guess, 10 and 12 will open very soon, maybe as early as next week. And then grade it, then maybe nine and 11 and then six. So maybe in a month or two, all of us will be together in school. I hope so, fingers crossed, pray that Corona go goes. That's the only way, that's the only way. Corona has to go. <laughs> And I think we should get vaccinated. That's a tool for us to fight this current situation. So I'm just reading all the comments uh, in the comments box below. And we have a lot of parents who have uh, said thank you to Master teachers for coping with students and uh, making such good uh, of the situation. Lots of students have learned a lot without the fear and pressure. This is uh, I have a comment from Sweda saying efforts taken by teachers to help students keep interest in online classes, in academic classes. Uh, we have a lot of thanks for coming in for Nath Valley schools, teachers. I have questions about students who have asked for uh, how they could cope with the stress that they are feeling um, and to keep them entertained at all times. Um, so I think we did touch upon capability. <clears throat> Any cues on how to entertain the kids while they're locked in at home? There is no substitute for family board games, not B O R E D, but B O A R D. <laughs> No substitute. You know, get lots of these games and, you know, sit and play, whether it's Monopoly or Ludo or uh, there's so many games, Battleship and, uh, you know, uh, you know, bonding of the family. And, you know, so parents do have to spend time. And initially the kids will say, oh, so boring, not interested. But once they start, it's just so exciting for them, you know. And, you know, uh, identify families that uh, you feel are neighbors and quite safe. Let those kids come and play with, with your kids. Um, take them for drives, um, you know, not necessarily to get out of the car, but just take them for a drive, uh, you know, up to uh, some mountainous place. Uh, if, if there's curfew in lockdown, you can't do that. But very often, you know, movement of cars is allowed when maybe restaurants and things are closed. So. There's so many things you can do to entertain and, and online music, dance, um, and uh, debate, MUNs, um, so many online competitions, poetry writing competitions, find those things and let your kids do it. I know some of the kids I was in touch with in, in the senior classes did so much during the online uh, classes and the lockdowns. 
um, and uh, except for meeting each other. So the family has to substitute uh, the friends and you have to sit down together and do stuff at home and, uh, and talk to the kids, make them, uh, you know, give them little tasks and uh, give them little competitions among each other. Okay, now you all do a painting and let's see who does the best one, I'll give a prize. So, you know, all that kind of thing. So, you know, wait. Our theme this year, by the way, is innovation. So that goes for parents. Innovate. So I have a question. Uh, he's basically asking what is the school doing for the well -being, mental well-being of the children? Are there any steps by the school? Yes, so we have a we have a counselor, and uh, if any uh, child wants uh, a session with the counselor, they can tell their class teacher and uh, they'll have a session. There are regular sessions for class eight and nine happening. And uh, later on for class 12 about the future, all that will happen. But anybody who has an issue can just tell the class teacher who will refer them to the counselor. Okay. And I think I would like to add from my experience that uh, the class teachers are doing a fine job of also helping the kids out. So if you feel there is a challenge, then reach out to your class teacher as well. And I'm sure she will. Also and, you know, some some uh, some kids just came to the school with their parents. I, I have this lovely incident where Mrs. Barbreka, my secretary, rang me up and said, you know, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so are here with their child. They want to come meet you. I said, it's fine. They come to collect something. Some book collected. So I send them. So um, they didn't come. Their class two daughter came. She's the one who me. came and sat down on the big chair in front of me and said, so how are you, sir? That's I mean, so how you've been? I said, I've been doing What about you? What have you been doing? She said, no, oh, I've been baking and I've been doing this and that also five minutes uh, with such confidence she had a chat with me and uh, then went off and the parents said she's so happy you know that you know she got to come to school and talk to you and so on and so forth you know so if if any child is just feeling lost and missing school they can come you know you're not allowed to hold classes but nobody says you can't visit the school so it mask up walk around it's a huge campus it's a very safe campus because of the openness so definitely come. I had class one and two children who came and they were so delighted. You know, they were squealing with joy. It was amazing. When they saw the amphitheater and the football ground and all that. So, yeah. you know, me mental well-being um, is important and sometimes a change of scene and an outing with your parents or just school or something like that can give you that little uh, perspective change. True. Uh Support is that uh, it supports our end as well can make a huge difference. Uh, just a little innovation. Plan ahead. We all have busy agendas. Plan that one thing or two things a day that we do together. To, uh, bring that excitement in the children. Well, that's the best source for it for your children. So I'd like to end with the last question I have here on the live. Uh, I have uh, asking me that um, there are children who don't enjoy online classes, who are born with this setup, who are not able to actually gain from it. Do you have any advice for them how they could make this experience fruitful uh, for them? Maybe their personality type is more like a wholesome environment versus a school in them. Um, how do they take advantage? So, um, if you are bored of online classes, and I, as I said, there's some children who did much better, but there's the opposite in the spectrum, and it's not necessary that everybody would like to stare at a screen. So, set yourself a goal. Set yourself a goal that look, circumstances are such we have to cope with the circumstance. The only option is an online class. So, my goal is, <clears throat> set yourself a goal. My goal is that this time, when the assessment takes place, I'm going to improve my um, grade by 5%, 10%. Set yourself a goal and tell your parents, mom and dad, just for you, make you happy. I'm going to do this. So if you have a goal, if you have a target, then um, the journey to the target becomes much easier. But if you are a rudderless, 
ship just floating around, then you don't have a, a motivation you know, to it. So, you know, who would you like to bring happiness to your parents or your, your grandparents? Or, you know, who would you like to maybe challenge, you know, your brother or sister that I'm going to improve on what you have got? Set yourself a goal, a target. And then when you know I have that target, then even if the online classes are boring, you will suffer it, but you'll reach your goal. That's yeah. the important thing. And I think I would like to advise the seriousness into the environment, like do the uniform, let them have downtime, let them do a joyful thing. So that they experience that if they are doing too much different things, which is maybe taxing any their school time starts with that. So balance that is make them serious and let them have a more fluid way for the rest of the day, at least in this situation. So they have a balance. And we've also told our teachers, and one of the workshops that we had last week was on how to make the online classes more interesting, more diverse. Uh, so they are preparing lessons and you'll see the change. You'll see the change that each one is going to do. <clears throat> I have truly noticed that already in the last few days of my sessions, all the PowerPoint presentations have been quite interactive. Um, thank you so much for the wonderful conversation for your openness uh, sharing with us on all topics. I think this will have uh, doubts for a lot of us and for a lot of parents and students. Uh, thank you to Nathan and of course all the schools across the country who are doing a wonderful job, who have truly supported the parents in this journey. Thank there and thank you for Throwing light on what the school is going through, not only our challenge, but uh, of course, the school also has to put it in. And I'm really glad that our children are great collaborators and the parents. And I'm sure we'll fight over this. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to air my voice. Thank you. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you to all the parents and students who were here. Take care, keep well, keep healthy, keep safe. Thank Bye. you. Thank you everyone for joining us. Be on the page. So if you have missed any do feel free to sign in. Ciao.